placed in here. What better time than now? Hey everybody, welcome to Psychic Nerds 22. Um, you can see the cast of characters before you. Uh, we're joined by a brand new person, so I'm going to have to start with you. Uh, hi, Violet. That Violet. Hello. Um, and Lost. Oh, sorry. Shaker ADA. I almost turned the universe upside down. Sorry, dude. Uh, Ave Maria's here. Uh, David Dash. Ripple Rudy. BNB Barefoot. And, and Shitcoin Santino. Um, Rudy, why did we pick these names today? Well, this is the time in the market when all of the uh, new talking heads show up with their favorite coin name in their uh, YouTube name, and they start uh, blathering on and repeating everything they've heard and uh, tell people to buy their coins. Yep. Pamp my bags, dude. Pamp That's them. Right. And you get them sweet endorsements and you start pumping other shit coins. I know, right? That's a, that's good though. I'm glad you one. It's funny, and two, um, it's nice to have new names. And three, um, boy, we are we are entering in that time, aren't we? When there's going to be a whole new cast of characters popping up, trying to get you or you to uh, divest yourself, of either your fiat or, or some of your blue chips for a bunch of crapola. Um, not that the ones we picked today are crapola. We're just kind of playing. Uh, I think most of us tried to pick something that would uh, kind of match our names or, or marry our names or rhyme with our names or something like that. Um, you guys seeing an increase in uh, scammy activity out there in crypto land? I've been completely you isolated by you guys. Wow. That's great. So you feel protected. Yeah. Isolated. You're, you're letting your own juices flow, as they say. <laughs> You're marinating, man. I don't. I don't know where I'm going. Um, Sit, yeah. Sitcoin protection team. That's what we are. Sitcoin protection team. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's right. That's so good. That's great. Um, you know, I, I've been haven't come across to what I have read on a few of a few people. Uh, I don't know if it's the steps that I've taken, or you know, after listening to everyone else. And what I continue to take, I don't know, but uh, I have not come across to what other people have. <clears throat> yeah, I noticed uh, several new pumping up groups popping up. Uh, what else have I noticed? Eh, just seen some kind of pampy stuff from uh, dead coins. Eh. But if you've been doing this a while, you know that they're dead coins. But I, but, like, uh, I'm ultra suspicious too. Like, if even if something comes from, like, let's say I get something from Trezor saying, "Hey, we did this," I go to the Trezor blog. If I, you get something from your exchange, I go to the exchange and look it up. I don't click on any email links because I don't know. That's just my 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 gut telling me don't don't mess with that. Just list. common sense. Yeah. Good rule yeah, in general. Uh, never... Bookmark. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, multiply move. Yeah, and, and you know what you said to check it for secure site bookmark it all and uh what we all say practice discernment that's a good point right so let's go into that a little bit more <clears throat> ave maria so if you were to pull up a, a search site a search engine let's just say like google and you were to type something in there the first one that's going to pop up is an ad for that thing that you just typed in right because they love their ad revenue so um, you never click on the ad, do you? I don't even use Google in the first place. <laughs> well, let's say there's people out there that do use Google because <laughs> yes, they do. Yes. So you would never click on that first one, that ad, because uh, that can be redirected. Uh, I mean, with all Ripple Rudy's money, he could set up a bunch of these ads that, that redirect them to Rudy's fun house where uh, he collects their ETH, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, just a general rule. Um, it's a good idea. It, once you have the real site, it's usually good to like bookmark it somehow, some way. Um, do you want to show us your uh, your little? I almost, uh, you, yeah. yeah. Which, what do you My got? Your book? diary. Yeah. My new diary. Um, so as I mentioned before about the stone book, this is how it looks like, and so you get this little beautiful thing. So I'm just going to show you where I have written the words. So you tell me. Do you see anything? So this is for crypto. This is the new thing that I've bought for myself, just an extra level of security. And Santino loves it. So he wants to buy this kind of book as well. And so if you shine a light, do you see? So it's invisible ink and a, and a notepad, and then you reveal it with this special light that you have in your hand. 
Yes, and it's is there, uh, hey Maria, uh, Queen Maria, is there a decoder ring that comes with that? <clears throat> For special people only. Can you write down all your man whore phone numbers in there too? And, and keep yes, you can keep whatever you would like. You have a special pen to label it as well, if you like. Can I make a grocery um, list with it? No, I wouldn't use it for that. A waste of that. But what Ru what uh, Ripple Rudy suggested for my man whore list. It's San very small though. Santino, you're going to use something like that for your uh, diary? You're going to write your deepest, darkest secrets and, and something like that? No, because I'd scare myself writing that stuff down. I, 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 pr I prefer to not put it down for posterity's sake. I don't want everybody. All diaries are eventually found by somebody. Just FYI, spoiler alert for everybody. Anything you write down will one day be found by somebody. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> Before we get going here, we'd like to send a special shout out to our buddy, uh, Samantha Jane James. Uh, we'll call her Sia Sam today because um, she's not feeling well. She's under the weather. Uh, a lot of us are ex either experiencing uh, extreme exuberance um, or extreme exhaustion. Uh, and if I didn't nail it for one of you guys here, please chime in about what you're experiencing lately. But uh, <clears throat> we're all feeling uh, a lot going on here and other places, and we're being affected by it. Um, I think personally, I'm picking up on just I'm connected to a lot of people that are experiencing extreme highs right now and even uh, some worries, and it's it's affecting me. Um, I don't necessarily think I'm that uh, like um, – I don't think I'm an empath or anything like that, uh, but I'm just, I feel like I'm picking up on a lot. And um, so it's making me kind of drained, uh, I think mostly, but obviously there's some other stuff going on too that I don't want to talk about. But uh, anyway, uh, how are you guys feeling uh, about this energy? How are you grounding? Are you feeling anything? Am I full of crap? Uh, what's, what's happening? Well, if I may chime in, um, I think that it's no um, accident that I was given the nod to move to an outback town at this time when I look back at the timing of it. So right I'm, on. I'm, yeah. Right on time. Keep going. Sorry, I interrupted. No, no, that's good. I, I mean, where I am now, life is much simpler. Um, the environment is quite good for me, for my particular body type. And it's a little town of 1200 people. So it's, it's not, like having to um, navigate through a city. I mean, even the things that we take for granted, like driving in a driving in a car in heavy traffic, stuff like that, um, that does place a lot of pressure on you, particularly when you're in times of high stress. So, I don't have to deal with any of that right now. Um, I'm actually very glad. Will you let us know when you feel the need to move to Mexico City or Tokyo or something like that? Well, you know, Thailand's <clears throat> next on my list. Move. Thailand, never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, wonderful, mystical place. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Um, I've been getting into the more woo of uh, the art that I practice lately. It's, um, it's, I've always been drawn to that, but I'm really being drawn to it right now for some reason. I wonder if I'm going to take a trip as well. Um, <clears throat> anybody else want to chime in about these energies? It's happening. No, Mu, you mentioned that the energy is coming in. And have you done anything to, because we were kind of talking about this before, to block it off uh, where you're not impacted by people? Uh, or is that something that I'm just trying, I don't even know how to go about doing that. I feel like uh, it's something I need to learn. I, I feel like I'm the type of person that kind of throws myself into reckless abandon when I feel like there's uh, like an agitating force. I kind of want to go towards it. <laughs> I don't typically want to go away from it. I'm drawn to engage it. Uh, so what I have changed is I'm not a napper, but I started to kind of take, there's been dudes, there's been several days that where I just, I'm exhausted. It's like, I've been logging all day, right. Um, or something. So it's just, I can't, I can't function. So I've been taking just, you know, short 30 minute naps, 45 minute naps, whatever, just trying to reset. That seems to help. That's what I've been doing. I think you to answer your question, Rudy, uh, another really good way is just to channel it. I think that's one of the reasons why I got the impetus to restring my guitars a few weeks ago. I think so too. Uh, do, you, out. do you feel like that was a distraction, you mean, Shaker Ada? Uh, 
just a way to uh, be able to you know handle the different energies that it was it more intuitively a, a way to like sidestep it or you know have them come at me but then channel them through music so I didn't, that they wouldn't be a distraction from other things. Yeah, there's some there's some Hindu practices around uh, meditations around like things like housework and things like this, right? Have you guys ever heard of these things? Yeah, like everything that you do to shiv it, to shiv it, to pivot, and speak English also helps <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to we, pivot. Uh, and just to go more what B and B barefoot said, um, be paying more attention. And it's like, oh, look where I am now. I am away from people, like, you know, where I moved to. And like you said, even though I never had problem with the traffic, but to now just jump in the car, have a drive into the city and get out. I don't spend time in the city at all. I'm in the village mountain beach. And to, to realize how beneficial it has been to be away from the people. It started last year, didn't it, Andre? Like when I moved in with her, no contact. Like I completely just went like, like our shit coincentino became a ghost. I just, and now it's happening the same thing. And for me personally, it has been an emotional week, but there's a lot of, um, you know, thanks to my people here, Shake ADA and BNB Barefoot to, to have them as, uh, I say, they hold the space for me and to come to a realization where I still lack certain, I haven't mastered certain skills, but then at the same time, it's been an emotionally beautiful week. I was shown how one of my dreams will come true, and that's thanks to Shaker ADA, to how what him and his future partner, how they, the role I'll play in their life. And that was a beautiful emotional thing to see. And then, get, as you guys know, being barefoot as well, she's a sister from another mother for me. So just to see those things, that emotionally has been wonderful for me. It's like, where are, you, where are your real family? Where are your real friends? Mm. Yeah. And that's what took a lot of emotion to see that. You know, you see that as an image as I was talking to them and just to see that picture come together. And for me, it's quite beautiful, but also emotional because you guys know I, I do feel deeply. And one of my, well, I'm not going to go into it, one of the skills that I will be mastering. But yeah. So that's Some, me. Somebody mentioned in the green room too, uh, I think it was you, uh, Ave Maria, you mentioned um, possibly uh, using some grounding techniques by taking a shower, being near water, yes. or I think, uh, you know, a couple other people, which we've, we've all kind of practiced some of these probably, but uh, walking in nature uh, barefoot, um, probably not now with uh, some of us are covered in snow right now, but um, that helps, right? Yes. Uh, um, Santina also have mentioned that about um, having snow, you know, like ripple Rudy is standing on the ground, uh, walking on the beach. And uh, so while I'm still not climatized fully to this environment, but I do need to keep my head cool. I function better in this environment as well now. That's another thing what, you know, Barefoot BNB mentioned. She's functioning better. She's where she needs to be. I, on the weekend, snowboarded and then I sat down lay down on my board and I allowed the feet to be out so snow went on my face that was another way for me to ground and fly down the hill so, wow yeah. that's that's like a less extreme version of a face wash when, when I was a kid like you you know you take turns like plunging each other's faces into snow banks just oh I did that as well <laughs> but not for me <laughs> yeah Violet <laughs> um I'm so glad you're here. So this is your inaugural visit, your um, your first appearance on the uh, Psychic Nerds. Um, Happy to be here. I'm not much of a show my face on camera person, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, well, we're all glad you're here and um, I'm glad you made it up to the Discord and you've been hanging out. Um, tell us about uh, how you got there, uh, why you thought it was important, and maybe more importantly, why you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a friend that is also, I'm, I'm a little woo, and uh, I have a friend who also is. We immediately picked up on it when we met each other, and we've been close friends ever since. Um, 
And this person, this friend had been just talking about crypto and I just kind of, yeah, yeah, whatever. And um, finally, I started asking more questions, more about like, you know, my friend mentioned, we, we get on, let me show you this video. We actually talk about a lot of woo stuff too, which actually is what drew me in. And then um, just one day, I, I love the energy of the group and I'm feeling great validation on things I didn't even realize. Uh, I remember last week, I think Shaker, you said you were having songs come to you. I had this random song, I was at work um, I had this random song, the the Ice Ice Baby, you know, it's not popular, it's not new, but that was in my head all morning. And I walked past a nurse's station and all of a sudden I just stopped dead in my tracks because somebody's phone rang and that was the ringtone. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I've just been feeling, I, I'm, I'm, I came for the woo, I stayed for the crypto and I'm loving the energy of the group. And it's, it's providing validation for my, my talents and abilities. And it's just good energy. I don't know. I, I feel, I feel good being here. Well, we love that you're here and uh, appreciate you staying and uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And um, there's so much to learn, right? Uh, you run into so many people from all over the world and um, they're at different places with different things. And it's just a great, you feel at home. It feels like you're at home. Um, yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah, place you can let down your guard a little bit. Um, yeah. I, I like it. You know, some of us have had lots of experiences in our life where we're, me personally, you know, I'm trying to explain crypto or I'm trying to explain this weird obsession or I'm trying to explain uh, why why some obscure thing is important or you might talk a little bit about woo and most people just look at you like you got a horn grown out of the side of your head, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. Moo, that's a good segue for uh, Vet Violet is a crypto newbie because I was, I was thinking about this Wednesday, like as I reflected back on being through the 2017 bull run and, you know, the gains and losses, you know, what advice would I have for someone who's new? And that's part of why we did these fun names is because we're at that time, like we said, where you're going to see the talking heads. Um, and, and it was so funny because it's like you plucked these words out of my brain on Thursday on your, uh, your meetup with, with Sam was the wealth effect. And I'm sure we've all been there before where suddenly like you, you look at your crypto portfolio and you're like, man, this is awesome. I'm doing great. Yeah, I'll buy that. And, and you start spending money that you don't have because you haven't taken it out yet, right? <laughs> but you feel rich. And, and this is something like that you will start doing and you really have to be careful of because if it's not in your pocket, you, you haven't, you know, you're really not that rich. Um, but, you know, and the other thing was that, you know, in San, Shitcoin Santino, I'm sure you have some perspective is, you know, you have these bull market geniuses where you can't make a wrong move and everybody's going to be, uh, you know, hey, look what the call I made. I did this. Well, guess what? I can say point to any coin and it's going to go up. So I just want to hear your guys' thoughts on as you've been through these the cycles before, what, any like uh, key thoughts or advice you'd give to someone new coming in here? I'm going to let Santino go because uh, the ghost has been kind of quiet today. So we'll let him talk for a minute. If he's around, he might be making a cappuccino. No, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm listening intently. And, and yeah, I, I agree. That's uh, well, listen, uh, I've been saying he's, now. He's buying you know, rare artwork because of the wealth effect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, sorry. That's a, Go ahead. that's a different story. So I can do two things at once. Okay. So we uh, I, like I was saying a couple of years ago, you know, when we were still in, uh, bear market territory for the alts and everybody was depressed and it's like when is this crap ever going to start moving and and i'm like believe it or not the stress isn't going to be now this is not stress stress will be when it goes up oh no that's going to be you know every, it's going to be part no no that's when the stress starts because once it buying coins when they've bottomed okay is not is not hard that's the easy part it's what you do with them when they go up. What happens to you when wealth comes? Uh, it plays with your emotions. It plays with your psychology. I've been through many bull markets, not just crypto. I've been at this game a long time, and I know what it does to you. And it will take you for a ride. And if you are not centered, you guys started this, uh, you know, you started this, you know, talking about being centered. That is not just a woo thing. That's going to help you survive. That's how you keep your wealth right? This isn't just some 
add on that you do in your life. And it's kind of like a relaxation thing. If you're treating it that way, you're not getting what's happening. Okay. You, you need to make this a part of your life uh, because from that, everything else will flow. You won't make bad decisions with your crypto. You won't make bad decisions in your personal life. You know, you will be wiser. Um, wisdom comes from that place inside of you. It doesn't come from uh, watching YouTube or, or consuming information. Consuming information isn't wisdom, okay? It comes from somewhere else. Wisdom is what will be required over the next 12 to 18 months. People, more people lose money in bull markets than they do in bear markets. Let me say that again. More people lose money in bull markets than they do in bear markets. Thank you so much for saying that because it's so true. And I mean, I could piggyback on so many things you just said, but you said it so well and Rudy as well. <clears throat> Knew a lot of people in that last bull run and uh, they immediately started running up credit card debt. They started doing all sorts of things and then, oh my God, right? They experienced a 98% loss in their coins. Uh, they're left in a tough spot because they were rich. They were, but they, they were unrealized rich. I agree uh, wholeheartedly because I've seen this with myself, I've seen this with others. When you've already experienced 98% of loss on a token, it, there's no real, there's, it can't hurt much more. You've only got 2% left to go. So that you're not, it's like uh, you don't have to make a decision. Like the only decision is just a hold. You've already been bloodied. Your nose is broken. Your your collarbone is is ruined. Uh, you just you just wait, right? Or you heal. Um, you you wait for it to be over. When on the reverse or inverse of that, when you're experiencing brand new all time highs and things, now you're in undiscovered territory, right? Now it starts all over again. The panic. The and there's a weird psychology thing too, isn't there? That more people are concerned about losing what they have and then a kind of acquiring what they don't have. And that's a really interesting psychological thing that I think people should get comfortable with and, and figure out how to navigate. Um, I've known some very wealthy individuals and listen, they are, they are a wreck about trying to protect what they have um, where their lives are so much more chaotic than maybe they would be if they didn't have anything. Um, anybody else seen that with people that you know that are wealthy? Oh yeah, insurance. Insurance is the very first thing that um, very wealthy people tend to think about. It's definitely about maintaining what they have rather than, I mean, I guess people are always looking to acquire more, but the not losing what you already have is, is the main focus of strategy at that point. And we all can confirm it's um, what Santino have mentioned the importance of being grounded so then you don't come from a place of fear you come from yeah. a place of groundedness and certainty and the best person that i always love the way he addresses things he's on here that's david dash he does not fomo in that's one thing about david since the day i met him he never fomoed in i tried twice and i lost so when i kept and i don't fomo out either that's correct that's another great point he is grounded I'm not going to say just because he's German. No, he has a great attitude, in my opinion. And more than one person also, um, I think Santino, one of the guys mentioned the importance of checking in. And I think I've shared that every single one of us have different lifestyles. So which means we all have a different uh, levels of, um, what's the terminology BNB that I'm trying to use, of how much we can tolerate whatever you want to call it, Lev you know what I'm trying to Level of risk. Yes, a level of risk. of risk, as well as different understanding, like say with multiple I move. For me, it does not make sense to go all into Ethereum. It doesn't mean he's wrong. He just doesn't agree with me. And it's very important to learn, but then listen to you. That is what I kept reiterating and continue to reiterate. Listen to your own gut, learn. Like there's a lot of uh, wisdom has been shared already but always make your own decision because then you will not lose. That's my opinion to all of you. Ask, ask David Dash what his strategy is on silver and you'll understand how grounded this gentleman is. Yes. Please hey, David Dash, Dash, what's your strategy on silver? Hold it <laughs> until it's worth enough. 
uh, it's always buy cheap, sell expensive. That's all. So and not the other way around. Do you have an experience with buying a token that goes to basically dust? Um, and do you just continue to hold it? Are you like it? Well, if it's dead, no, it's no. dead. Coin? I, I got in two years ago and it was right at the low. I got in at the right time. That's it. Ah, wow. That's great. That's good. Uh, you do always seem very even, very calm, uh, very. Um... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much the opposite of an empath. I've got a pretty thick skin <laughs> and well, everything goes to pieces around me. I'm the one who, who stays grounded and, and has a clear head and it's just the way it is. I like that. You're like a rock. Uh, I like that. Yep. Um, a lot of us have joked around before. You got like this movie star face, right? And you got this like 007 persona, like cool as a cucumber under extreme duress, uh, fighting bad guys, you know espionage like that's that's how you come off to me uh you might and, be and, right i know i know right. i can't say anything <laughs> he I could know. tell you but then he'd have to kill you i know right <laughs> yes yes i would ha i would have to blow up the zoom <laughs> so we're speaking of this with uh people from a little bit of experience riding this this crypto dragon and maybe other aspects of our life as well i want to hear from violet and not to put you on the spot but uh what's that that he will N nothing <laughs> what's you, your question <laughs> well you mentioned something to me the other day about having a specific app on your phone and how often were you checking it Atomic wallet, that one. <laughs> yeah, but how I, how often were you refreshing, right? A lot. Like a lot. <laughs> probably like every honestly, two seconds, huh? Probably honestly hourly. I'm doing it because I'm excited. I'm kind of in the honeymoon phase, but I also like to study patterns. Like I don't, I'm not I, I've already experienced little losses, right? I, I haven't put I'm not a big fish. I haven't put a ton in, but what I have put in, I'm, I'm seeing a high for me right now, but I've also like throughout the weekend, I think lost quite a bit and it didn't make me anxious surprisingly, but you have to put, be able to put in what you're willing to lose. Right. So that's what, that's like, that was my first rule. Cause I, you know, I was told, see if you can put thousands in, you know, it, whatever, whatever you put in will multiply times 10 this year and you could do lots of things with that. And my first thought was, take out some loans. And then I was like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you, you have to, I have to pull myself back, but yeah, I, uh, I really love atomic wallet and I like to check it quite frequently. I'm very consumed all of a sudden in this world. Well, I really appreciate that. I, I know we do too. Uh, there's been times when we were the new person coming in and, uh, you know, <laughs> probably obsessed. Some of us were obsessed, completely obsessed before we even got in the market, uh, just knew that we had to. And then, uh, listen, I, I, that's how I felt. Yeah. My, my friend talked to me about it a few times before I, I just kind of, I feel like I just woke up one day actually after being on the discord. And like I said, I would kind of scroll past all that stuff, but then I just kind of woke up and I was like, I need to get into this <laughs> just to see, just to check it out. I think this is going to be something great. So uh, so I remember being drawn into it and it was this uh, overwhelming, you, it wasn't just about the price. It was, you have to consume information and learn about this technology. And, you know, I think I was laid up with a broken leg back in 2017. And, you know, I was watching any video I could find about Bitcoin and how it worked and reading, uh, you know, white papers, and all kinds of stuff and just absorbing as much as I could. And then I finally kind of reached my limit, but you, you have to go through that process. I think, and when you do, it's because there's something greater drawing you into it and you're not just in it for the money, but you, you realize that this is something that's um, transformative in the way we're going to be living our lives. Yeah. The as well as, go ahead. sorry, Violet, I think for, like, I don't know if you've noticed that you also then see yourself from a different angle because it's a different world, right? Crypto, like different language. So different ha have language. you noticed that? Like you've, you like discovered a new part of you. Yeah. I feel very, I feel different. I definitely don't feel like I, I my same self, maybe three weeks ago, even there's a lot wow. of great stuff on the discord. That's been really helpful though. Yeah. I love the perspective of a new person. It takes us all back to when we were new and everybody is new at one time. Um, 
I want to go back to the wealth effect a little bit. Um, what are the risks of feeling the wealth effect? We talk, talked about getting overextended, having a feeling like you just can't lose, <clears throat> that you're a genius. Um, ego starts to probably step in a little bit, creep in a little bit for some of us. Uh, but, but let's talk about more like the nuts and bolts of it. Like, let me give you an example. Uh, there were some NFTs and some artwork I wanted to participate in. I look at my portfolio, I'm like, I can afford these and I want to be involved. So it causes different sectors and different things uh, in crypto space to be opened up to you and be options for you that maybe they weren't before. Um, Santino or anybody else, can you speak about what the wealth effect does <clears throat> and how it also expands either crypto space or maybe some things to, to look out for, a warning or... Because I saw, and I'll just, I'll reference it this way, and then you can answer it however you would like, whatever aspect of it. I just don't mean one to... quick thought. Only spend the money you have in your hands. Thanks, David. I, I think that's, that's right on because I saw a lot of people that were super early to Bitcoin, super early to Ethereum. In the last run, <clears throat> they were so wealthy or felt like they were so wealthy, experiencing a very significant wealth effect. They thought that they could go speculate in a thousand tokens or a hundred different ones, right? 150 and they got they got ruined because most of them got destroyed um, and all, also for that what david dash mentioned know your comfort zone and your discomfort zone get spend time with you get to know you become very aware of your limitations and your life remember like i'm who i'm responsible for i'm not just responsible for myself i'm also a mother and so that is what i choose to do so that means i have to make smart decisions not stupid decision where for someone they are smart decision in my case that will be stupid decision and so that's why i keep it very imperative you spend time with you and get to know your comforts and discomforts and you feel like that helps you to to be knowing your place helps you to not be what's the word um not speculative impulsive it, it allows you to not be super impulsive at that as well as not put myself in a position where I have to ask, um, I, what's the right terminology I'm using, where I find myself stressing, where I find myself in you know, watching the market go this, it, just because I have money on the side, I don't have to put it into crypto, you know, like, oh, put it on in, you're going to double. doesn't mean that I've, I've seen the result. I see what, but you know what? I know me and I know how I work. If I do this step, where in some case people can do that, their threshold when we talk about tolerance is different, but then their lifestyle is different. So That's you try, yeah. so you try to stick to your general investment principles, whether we're in a bull market or a bear market, <clears throat> you maybe already have a certain amount of money that you're willing to play with or put in or, 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 or pick up something for, but you're not, you're not letting this wealth effect rule your investment decisions moving forward. That's right. Yes. Uh, being in, um, let's say coming close to, uh, let, let's uh, let's say I've had, uh, as you guys all know, you all had experiences as well, coming to not knowing where I'm going to get my next meal from, if I'm going to get a job, if I'm going to pay for the mortgage, uh, how am I going to raise a child to now going, okay, I'm comfortable, but I still got to be smart because I, I spend enough time with me to know this is my life. This is my reality. Even though I trust, I have faith in God, I have in source, but I also need to do my part. I can't just go, yeah, whatever. No, it's not, it's not like, you know, crypto is addictive. So we started, you've got to be smart. We started the show with talking about being balanced and grounded. And now, once again, we're coming back to this idea of being balanced and grounded. I, I really like this. This must be a recurring theme for us because we keep, we keep returning to it. So psychically, metaphysically, uh, I think this is probably important. Uh, or it's something we are really wanting to do is stay balanced and, and grounded. Santino, what you got to say about all this nonsense? Well, like everything else, there's different levels of, just like there's different level of experience in crypto, there's different levels of experience with uh, wealth management, right? Which is essentially what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Right? So the advice that I would give to new people is not the advice I'd give to intermediaries and you know, people who are beyond intermediary don't need advice from Santino. They know how to build wealth so, and keep wealth. What I will tell you, you know, Maria does a good job at explaining what most new investors in Violet, what most new investors go to 
And I agree with everything they said, staying balanced, don't take stupid chances. Don't sell good coins for crap coins. You're placed in here. What better time than now? Oh, hey!